we are not designed to be creative. We were designed to be yielded. That is where our life begins to find meaning. It's possible for you to come into time and think it's all about business and money. And then you make money all your life. It's possible for us to come to time and think it's all about fashion. And then you make fashion all your life. And you never connected to the spirit realm until you depart. It's a game of spirits. You and I, we are in a league of spirits. They are using us the way we use chess boards. We are in a game of spirits. Whether you know it or not, we are participants of the purposes of spirits. So you must learn and make up your mind to know how you must begin to live from the spirit realm. If you don't get there, everything you know and your experience is a waste. All the meetings you go and fall on the ground is a waste. Because your life begins to count the day the Holy Ghost is giving opportunity to live through you. That has been his ambition all the while. The Holy Ghost has no other ambition. He wants to live. He wants to manifest Jesus. And the only chamber he has to manifest Jesus is you and I. The day Jesus begins to live through you by the Holy Spirit, that's the day your life begins to count. You can live for 50 years, your life will not count. Because as far as the divine side is concerned, you were only giving expression to different spirits apart from God. Some of us, our walls are a reflection of different spirits. Our dress code is a reflection of different spirits. Our energies and our abilities is a reflection of different spirits. So you can gossip for four hours. You can quarrel for three hours. But you cannot pray for three hours. The energy that emits through your vessel is a reflection of a spirit. The day Jesus begins to live through you, that's the day you are relevant. And life is short. What you call time is not up to a dot in eternity. You are only living on this side. That is why you think it's large. In the immortal side, it's like a dot. Because it is not controlled by time. It's not governed by time. When you go into immortality, 100 years will be a moment. It will be a moment. That was why Moses could climb a mountain and was there for 40 days. And he saw everything that happened from when the world was created up to where he was standing. How can he see that? Only Adam lived for 930 years. Methuselah lived for 969 years. How was Moses able to see everything that have happened through many generations, only in 40 days? The realm he was looking into is not governed by time. Why then will you think your own value should only be calculated in terms of time? What a waste. You go to a realm where time is not relevant. And then all you have, all your resources, all your value can be calculated in terms of time. You have been wasted. The only thing that can strike a mark in eternity are the things that are born by those spirits. So when you institute their reality here in time, by the time you journey back to their realm, you become a pillar. You are called a memorial for eternity. Because the reason why that spirit found expression in time is because you gave him access. So when you go back into his world, you will share in his glory. If all you gave access to is the devil, by the time you journey back to eternity, you will share with him. Because spirits are into leagues with men. Why would you not begin to give value to your life? Some of us spend all our value time on the things that appeal to our appetites. Either because of the house we want to build, the savings we have, we expand all our energies pursuing those ambitions. What a waste. What a waste. Has time itself not taught you enough lesson? The people that pursue those things, where are they? The houses that were the best houses 50 years ago, 
today they are trash. You have not gone to eternity yet. The only difference is that you came 50 years after the man that labored to build that house. If only that man had the understanding you have now, he would not have wasted his time on that house. Because you came after him. By reason of the time you came into this world, you are wiser than him. Because you saw everything he lived for is a waste. Already in time, you have not gone to eternity yet. And then you have not been educated enough. You are living the same way so that the people that will come 50 years after you we also know that your life was a waste. Time is a journey of value. You are giving value systems from eternity to sustain and to transact with them in time. Maybe I should just tell you a little about spirit civilization. I didn't want to talk about mysteries. But maybe let me just tell you about a little about spirit civilizations. Maybe to open your eyes before we begin to pray. Tonight I've not come to do so much of doctrine. I've just come to charge up your spirits. I've come to stir up your, your pure hearts. So that you begin to see better. Because if you see with only what you are seeing today. If you see with the vistas you are seeing today. You may end up a waste in eternity. That's why a large church like this can be empty. Where there are many vibrant youths. You expand your energy on other things. The day your life begins to count, people will find out where you are coming from. They will follow you. It's not to come and tell people, go and do evangelism. All you need to do is to burn. Somebody asked John Wesley, how are you able to gather the crowds? He said, I set myself on fire and the world comes to watch me burn. The world comes to watch me burn. They called Jesus the prince of devils. It didn't matter. The crowd pursued him. Because he was on fire. He was burning. He was a mystery to everything the theologians knew. You can talk against him, but you can't deny his results. So he went into the wilderness. 5,000 men pursued him there. You come to church every day alone. That's because nobody knows the God you are serving. You don't look like him. The day you begin to look like the God you are serving, everybody will follow him. It will shock you to know that Jesus never called us believers. Jesus never called us saints. Jesus never called us Christians. He called us witnesses. The word witness means exhibit. You are the proof that Jesus is real. And if your life cannot validate the existence of Jesus, then you are a waste. Because in eternity, your name is supposed to be an exhibit. When you came into time, who did you prove to that Jesus is God? The Muslim guy believed there is a God, but he doesn't believe Jesus is God. The only thing that will make him believe Jesus is God is because the exhibit is still in this world. But if you have not touched the spirit, all you have is in your head. So the guy who studies more than you, he will confound you. But the day you enter the spirit, what you bet is spirit life. Most of us are not living. We are just breathing oxygen. The day Jesus lives through you, that is the day your life begins to count. If you forget everything, don't forget that. The day Jesus begins to live through you, that is the day your life begins to count. It's not a function of age. It's a function of obedience. Yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. Yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. There are places where they don't have chairs. People come to stand. You have a large auditorium. Nobody is sitting inside. You are a waste. You are not a profitable youth. You may feel bad, but that's the truth. Because you are the one Jesus depends on. Have you not heard that the Bible said, Who will tell him to descend back? He can't come back. You are here for him. And if Jesus was here, it doesn't matter what people think or what people say. The crowd will be here. And beyond the crowd, their lives will be transformed. What are we using our energies for? What are we using our energies for? A revival is coming. And that is what will determine those who will be relevant in the next generation. But how many of us will be caught up in that way? How many will be caught up in that way? We want to hear sweet things. We want to hear lofty things. 
want to hear inspiring things. You have been inspired for many years. What has he resorted to? At this level, they still beg some people to come to church. You still have to send text message for them to come to church. In heaven, it doesn't matter who was leading you. What matters is, what did you do with the Holy Ghost that was put in you? God invested in every one of us the Holy Ghost. So we would not have any excuse. That's why he said, you don't need any man to teach you. He said, that anointing that is in you, teaches you all things. You don't need anybody to inspire you. You don't need anybody to set you on fire. The Holy Ghost is doing more than enough. You are refusing to yield. That's why you are where you are. And like I told you, these are matters of spirit civilization. You don't know the game spirits are playing over your life. That's why you think it's a joke. Adam thought it was all about fruits. He didn't know that his destiny was being backgained. When the spirit comes to you, it shows you a good path. But the end is destruction. There is a good that has destruction at the end. That good is of the devil. The devil is not all bad. There is a good in the devil, but the end of his good leads to death. That is why he shows you that path to deceive you, to beguile you. It's called the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Good has never been tamed with evil. But there is a good in devil that leads to evil. It leads to death. It leads to destruction. That's why he shows you that path. And then you enjoy it. You think it's good. But at the end of the day, he is bargaining your destiny. Being set on fire is not to be, it's not to hear things that inspire you and you are jumping. Being set on fire is not to hear sounds that make you feel excited. Being set on fire is for spirits to be literally transferred into you. A higher intensity of spirits. When it's imparted into you, his character dominates you. That's why you see a madman behaving the way he's doing. He is over, overdosed by a spirit of madness. So he cannot but manifest madness. When you see a girl dressing lustfully and carrying out sexual activity, it's not that he's been on fire. She was overdosed by a spirit of immorality. She can't control it. Everywhere she goes, she manifests it. The same way, if an intensity of the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you become a mobile Holy Spirit. You come to a place people are burning. As you are talking, He's rising on your inside. As you are praying, He's rising on your inside. You don't come to shout in the place of prayer. You come to be stirred so that you can go to higher corridors, higher chambers in eternity, where you will utter words from and you will be seen as a judge. Being on fire is not what you think it is. This thing is spirit business. You follow him until he saturates you. When he saturates you, his character is seen over you. His abilities are seen over you. His wisdom is seen all over you. That is when you are grounded. It's not when you want to read books and then you come to talk it to spike people. It's folly. 